Hello everyone, and welcome back to the video that I'm sure you all came for. In this video, we'll actually begin to put color down onto the image. And if you followed along with the first video, you should have a ready to color Photoshop file with color layers already created and adjustment layers set up. And if you don't, this Photoshop file should be available to download through a link in the description or the bio. And if you've chosen not to use the Abraham Lincoln image, this tutorial will still work just fine. Just follow the basic steps that I outlined and you should be getting a similar result, depending of course on the quality of the source image that you've chosen. One thing to keep in mind is that if you have the Photoshop file ready as we made it in the first video, you can simply use that PSD as a backup to copy over colors or layers into a new project to have a sort of rapid, easy start without having to recreate new color layers every time. Although keep in mind that the adjustment layers that we made aren't a one size fits all and they'll have to be either deleted and recreated or adjusted anew on every single new image. So if you have all the layers set up in front of you, let's simply just begin colorizing. And we will start with the easiest of all, which is the eyes. Remember that when you do this, that the only part of the eye that has color is actually the iris. The pupil has no color, but we're simply just gonna color the entire part in and erase the overflow after it. That's just easier and it saves a lot of time. So this may seem lazy, but it's actually a smart thing to do to simply color over everything and then erase after rather than zooming in and resizing your brush for one specific part because it gives a more even blended look and it's a lot faster. So you'll see me do this more as we move on. Next up is the foundation of the face, which is our highlights. So we're gonna place this anywhere where we find tight skin or very thin skin. And a good example of this are the ears and the nose where the blood vessels are a lot more visible than say the arms. And so we'll apply this highlight color to the nose, to the cheeks, and to the ears, and make sure that when you're applying it to the ears that you don't color into areas that are entirely black like you just saw on the top right of Lincoln's ear there. Once that's finished, we're gonna move on to the lips, which is gonna look like you're putting on lipstick, but don't worry, once the skin tone covers the lips, it'll look right. We'll do the insides of the eyes next, and for this, we're gonna zoom in quite far, and we're gonna get a tiny brush out. We'll color in the insides of the eye for this, including the third eyelid remnant in the sides of the eyes. Now, once that's done, we're gonna move on to the second largest part, which is the hair. Lincoln had dark to black hair, so we'll simply just cover both the beard and his eyebrows in one color. But if I had any idea that the beard and the hair differed in any way in color, or if I had a painting or a personal account as a reference, I wouldn't do it like this. I would duplicate the hair layer, change the color, and color both in as two separate layers but in this case, we'll just paint over it all. Next up is the big ticket item, which is the skin. So we'll simply just color in the whole area, including the hair and the insides of the eyes. Now, why we do this is a case of, it just looks right, and I've always done it this way, and it saves a lot of time not really having to worry about blending the border between this hair and skin. And, you know, lazy people will find the most efficient way to do something. So as for the insides of the eyes, make sure to erase with about 50 to 60% opacity so his eyes don't look too yellow. Now why we do this is that the sclera, which is the white part of the eye, isn't just gray, like if you hadn't colored it. Even white objects like the sclera, it needs color because otherwise it'll look gray. It's a different kind of gray and it's something that'll look weird and blocky and it just detracts from the finished result. Now once that's colored in all the way, make sure to go through your layer masks on every single layer. If you forgot how to do that, it's simply holding down your left alt and clicking on the black square on the layer itself, and then just check for any spots that you might have missed like you see me doing here, and simply clean them up by painting in the missing areas while you're inside the layer mask. It's pretty easy, actually. And once that's finished, believe it or not, you are actually done with the most basic colorization. We haven't adjusted the colors on the skin tones or the hair like I mentioned in the last video, but for now we have a pretty satisfying result. But the end result is not gonna look as good as you may have expected because we're not entirely finished just yet. For me personally, I always wait until this stage to start shading the whole image and adding in clothing. And if you don't take care of shadows or luminous looking areas like his hair or the bottom of his nose, you won't have a realistic result. What you're looking at might be a good end result for a few people, and if this is you, then great. Feel free to use this method and just skip the next step. But for those of you who want a truly realistic end result, the next video we'll do will cover lighting, shading, and also clothing. In the case of Old Ape here, it's very likely he was just wearing a black suit. So in this case, it would be nothing more than simply a dark blue color, but we'll go over how to do clothing in the next video. So I hope I'll see you there.